Hi, I'm Nicole Hill, and I am here as the president of Pennsylvania Association for Educational Communications and Technology. In other words, PAECT. So I am here to welcome you to our 28th annual PAECT Student Showcase. Normally, we would meet with you at the Capitol building and share the learning that's happening across the state. But with the pandemic, the learning is still happening in Pennsylvania, but it might just look a little bit different. So we have some schools that are in person, some schools that are virtual completely, and some schools that are attending a hybrid schedule. What we would like to do is just continue to share with you the amazing things that our teachers and students are doing across the state. Thank you to Sue Allen, who is our student showcase chair, and she has reached out and put together some presentations for you all to watch. So I appreciate and thank you in advance for watching what our students and teachers have to share. Thank you to the teachers who have taken on this presentation for the students in addition to all of the other things that we've had going on this year. So I hope that you enjoy watching what some of our districts are learning. You will see something from the Gettysburg Area School District, the Jim Thorpe Area School District, Carnegie Mellon University, uh, the Girls of Steel Robotics Team, and from the Quakertown Community School District. So we appreciate you continuing to support, support technology and to continue to support STEM education across the state. And we look forward to sharing with you, hopefully next year in person. Thank you. According to Story Proof, the science behind the startling power of story Storytelling is crucial to child development and helps to strengthen neural pathways that make learning of all kinds possible. This storyboard and animatic project is aligned to the National Core Arts Standards, Media Arts Connecting with an Anchor Standard, Synthesize and Relate Knowledge and Personal Experiences to Make Art. The enduring understanding is that media artworks synthesize meaning and form cultural experiences. Our cultural experience is dishwashing. Okay, um, this is my storyboard for washing dishes. Um, basically, it starts out with just showing the sink full of dishes, and then it moves to a man coming in, and he's shocked by the dishes, and he wakes up to realize it was all a dream. A storyboard is a graphic organizer that plans a narrative. Storyboards are a powerful way to visually present information. The linear direction of the cells is perfect for storytelling, explaining a process, and showing the passage of time. At their core, storyboards are a set of sequential drawings to tell a story. By breaking a story into linear bite-sized chunks, it allows the author to focus. By selecting each little square with the select tool over here, I was able to draw in the little square. An animatic is a preliminary version of a movie produced by shooting successive sections of a storyboard and adding a soundtrack. Dirty dishes sit in the sink. They appear as if from thin air and wait for someone to come to them. A man enters the kitchen unknowing about the dishes that await his arrival. The sight of the dishes stopped the man in his tracks. The man is completely shocked by the view of the dishes before him. In that moment, the man wakes up in a cold sweat, still terrified from the dishes from his dream. In this project, we capture the boring and use it. An old adage in the arts with a new twist with technology.
Hi, this is Ethan Kaiser here today to present the 2021 FBLA Coding and Programming Project. And this project in front of you was built using Visual Basic and the .NET framework. So before we get into any of the code, let's go ahead and run through the quiz. As you can see here, we have our main window with our title and a few buttons. On the right here, you see an ID information box that shows the ID, first and last name of everybody who has taken the quiz. This ID information is used here to see past results. So let's go ahead and look at an example of that real quick. As you can see, it shows the name, the, if it was incorrect or correct, and the correct answer if it was incorrect, and the print button, which we will look at later. And then we see our text to speech button down here. And let's go ahead and click through that. FBLA knowledge quiz. If you have already attempted the quiz, please enter your ID to find your results. And as you can see, I was still able to move my mouse and click buttons if I wanted to using that when that text to speech button was running because it was running on a separate thread. So let's go ahead and begin the quiz. We enter our first and last name and we hit the submit button. We see an ID that is generated one to 100,000 and it's a unique ID every time. This ID is then displayed in the top left along with the progress bar in the top right. We see our first question, multiple choice. We have four different answers. We see our text to speech buttons and all that. So let's say we don't click an answer. It says, please select an answer. So let's go ahead and click an answer. We see this window, it's a warning window. If we go to the next question, we will not be able to come back. And then we see this do not show message again. If we click that, this message will not show again. We see our text to speech button and our cancel. So let's cancel. We go to our next question, same multiple choice. Let's go ahead and click an answer. We click the do not show this message again button this time. And as you can see on this list box question, you can pick a answer and this will not show again. We move right to the next question. This is true and false, uh, pretty straightforward. We can hit true, not shown again. And then we have our fill in the blank. We do not use numbers, we use words to write this in here and it converts everything to uppercase so that the code can tell if it is the right answer. We also see our progress bar is full up here in the text to speak down here. Let's just put in a random letter and then we see our results. Our results show our incorrect answers, our correct answers, and the correct answer if it was incorrect. Then we see our print button. We can go ahead and hit that. It brings up a print dialog to print to any printer set up on your PC. Let's go ahead and look at the code. Here in the main window, um, we see our ID list box. This inserts all the rows into the list box every time the code is run from the database. And then we see down here, when we hit submit on that ID field button, we can then see if the ID exists. And if it does, we show the report corresponding to that ID. And then we see our text speech down here. Um, we're using a wait function to then run that in a separate thread so that it does not interfere with the UI thread. Let's move on to the name code. As you can see here, we try to run this code here that gets a random number from one to 100,000. If that is able to run, it does it. If not, it sets the not do value to false. This code continues to run. And after every time try count goes up and we get a unique value every time. First question, we have a, we see a function that gets the questions from the database using this question one value, which is a random number one through 10 for the first question, then is uh, 10 through 20 and so on for the respective questions. And we will look at that function here after this and we see answered correctly and we set a correct value to true or false. Then we share a text to speech and we check if an answer was selected. And if not, we say, please select an answer. Let's go ahead and look at that function. As you can see, it sets, it fills a data set from the data, from the database. And we can then use that to fill in text blocks and labels. So we go back and we can look at the question one warning. As you can see, counter goes up one if the correct value is true and the next window button is clicked. Because if we kept that there on the first slide where we hit submit and the counter went up, if we close out of this window and went back and hit submit again, the counter would keep going up and up if the correct answer was selected. 
Then we see our text to speech down here and we loop through our windows to close the question window and the warning window. So all the questions are pretty much the same. Uh, question five is a little different answer wise because it converts everything to uppercase and then checks the answer to make sure it's correct. And if not, sets the correct value to false. And then we see our text to speech down here. Let's go ahead and look at our results. As you can see, we use a function here. We put a value if we put a, a question number and a true and false value. And then down here, we insert that data into the database so we can see that later. And then we see our print button that uses an XPS document and compiles all the information on the window and that is able to be print. And then we see our text-to-speech. Let's go ahead and look at the function that calculates our results. Um, we see Question number one, if it is true, question one is correct. If not, it's incorrect and shows the correct answer. And that inserts all that data into the database so that we can see that later on our report. Let's go ahead and look at the report. So the report uses the ID entered into that ID field and then displays the name and all of the data shown on the results. And finally, let's go ahead and look at the database database here, we look at our questions. We have one through 50, correct answers and the correct answer number. Then we look at our user data. This is the IDs and the names of everybody and their scores. Then we see our past results, which is a little more specific. We have our question was incorrect or correct, all of that, and then the ID. Thank you for your time. Hello, I'm Janice. And I'm Aditri. And we are members of the Girls of Steel, a high school robotics team from Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Today, we are going to talk to you about our project called the Buzz Band, an exercise motivator for youth with autism. Girls of Steel was founded in 2010 to address the low number of females pursuing STEM careers and to compete in the first robotics competition. We're now a full-scale year-round STEM and robotics program. In a typical year, Girls of Steel builds a 120-pound competitive robot. In 2021, FIRST introduced the Innovation Challenge, which tasked us with identifying a problem and designing a solution to help people keep, regain, or achieve optimum health and fitness. As our focus, we are committed to making exercise accessible for the one in six children diagnosed with a developmental disability, including autism. 79% of children with autism have definite motor impairments hindering their ability to exercise without assistance. This can impede motivation and equipment accessibility. One interested parent said, I anticipate that our entire family will benefit from a device that keeps my son on track and excited about exercise. Also, vigorous activity for more than 20 minutes is shown to decrease automatically reinforced behaviors. We created the buzz band, an armband with four key features, wearability, vibration, metronomic sound, and external control. Studies show vibration is a positive motivator and a metronomic sound can encourage concentration. The external control accounts for people who need assistance. Vibration allows for sensory integration through tactile stimulus for youth with hyposensitivities. Furthermore, vibration is a motivator. Sometimes occupational therapists use massagers as rewards after completing an exercise. Metronomic sound also contributes to an easier pacing of activity. So how does the buzz band work? To use the buzz band, slide the soft sleeve designed to act like a second skin onto your arm and enable the band by pressing its button or using a Bluetooth device. Both the vibration and sound elements will work in tandem to promote an exercise routine. We plan to research if the buzz band accomplishes this intended purpose. Here's our prototyping timeline. In our final prototype, the buzz band, we used an Arduino Mega 2560, a buzzer, a coin vibration motor, a Bluetooth module, and the Arduino IDE. We made and tested four copies. Here's one on my arm. The buzz band is patent pending with two website domains. We tried our working prototypes on ourselves and we've contacted volunteers for future testing. Each prototype is about $60. Future plans include conducting customer trials and using specialized technology to reduce manufacturing costs. Furthermore, we plan to collaborate with organizations like the Autism Society of Pittsburgh who've already expressed their enthusiasm for the buzz band. Here's our contact information. Thank you for your attention.
Hello, and welcome to our Student Technology Showcase video. My name is Connor Rogers, senior at Jim Thorpe Area High School. Every year, we hear unfortunate stories of children dying from being left unattended in a vehicle. There have been a total of 11 cases in Pennsylvania since 1998, and a total of 883 in the United States since 1998. It's a very dangerous problem with a fairly simple solution. Today, Jason and I will present a solution to this problem in a project we've been working on over the past year. Before we get into the specifics, we want you to know that this is only a small representation of what would be implemented into a seat. This product would be pre-installed in regular seats and in child seats with car compatibility. As you mentioned previously, this is a model of a theoretical product. Uh, this represents the driver's seat. This represents the child's seat. So as you see, as the driver is sitting down, the LED light turns on to signal that there is indeed weight in the driver's seat. Then here we have the child seat, and there's a child sitting in it. And when the parent stands up to leave the car, as shown, the device beeps to alert the parent that their child is still in the seat. So when they sit back down, it stops. As for the programming behind our invention, it's quite simple. Our code is written in C++ and is a low-level language which allows programmers to have their code communicate directly with the motherboard. As the Arduino is basically a mini motherboard, it works out. Our code contains six key functions. Number one, digital read, enables the Arduino to find an electrical current on the LED pin. Number two, digital write, enables the Arduino to simply send an electrical current. Number three, high, turns on the LED. Number four, low, turns off the LED. Number five, tone, enables the Arduino to send a 500 hertz sound signal for 500 seconds to the speaker. Number six, no tone, prevents the Arduino from sending a sound signal to the speaker. Essentially, our code con consists of two if-then statements within one big loop that continues running the code to search for electrical currents indefinitely. That's the gist of our code. We truly believe this product to be revolutionary with the issues involving children left unattended in vehicles. For more information on the issue, visit injuryfacts.org and for more details on this project, email us. Thanks for watching. Hello, my name is Laura Gable. Hi, I'm McKenna Stalker. Hi, I'm Ariana Adams. We decided to make an Easter escape room for the fifth graders at Trumbarazo <laughs> Elementary School. First, we had to make questions and answers. Then we typed it into the computer and programmed a Google form so that kids cannot pass unless they use the right answer. This escape room helped the students in Trum to learn math and have fun at the same time. Hi, my name is Vadna V. Beavis Rascalita, and I love the Easter escape room because it had amazing challenges and I could work with teammates. Hi, my name is Angie Rodriguez. I'm in math class. I think that the escape room would be a good idea and it would be super fun. I also think it's cool that Laura McKenna and Ariana are challenging all of our fifth grade with math questions and working together to make this fun and challenging. Hi, my name is Avery DeFeo. I am in math class. I think the escape rooms are really entertaining and a good way to challenge the class's work. The questions and problems in the escape rooms are really fun and I enjoy doing them. When they do the escape rooms, I can tell the class really likes them and I think they're doing a really good job. Hi, my name is Lauren Ziegler, and I am a fifth grade math teacher at Tremarisville Elementary. And I am so proud of these girls and what they have done for themselves and our classroom this year. They came to me asking to create a math escape room, similar to ones that we did earlier in the year that I provided for them. And I fully encourage them to go ahead and use their creativity and their math skills. And they took it and ran with it and did a phenomenal job. They put so much of their own time and effort into collaborating 
and creating fun and challenging activities for their peers, and I could not be more proud of them. So, uh, fifth grade Trump Bowersville was fortunate enough to not only learn from me this year, but also from the three of these wonderful girls. Thank you for letting us showcase our hard work.